Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is a pick a card reading looking into what journey are you on? What journey are you on right now? And this could be small or big, depending on how this resonates for you. It could be what journey are you on literally just today. It could be a mini journey or this could be tuning into your entire soul's journey. So it's going to be up to you to feel into if this is big or small or somewhere in between. And it's cards numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. And before I get to the readings, I just have to give a huge amount of gratitude. Thank you to Sarah for donating the deck I am using. This is the Energy Oracle, and she gifted this to me through the Amazon wish list down below. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so, 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 so much for making this reading possible here, because I think these cards in particular are going to have something to say about your about the journey that we are all on right now. So I will see you guys in your reading. Okay, card number one. What journey are you on right now? Oh, <laughs> envy. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm not really surprised to see something like this coming up because I am filming this during the full moon in Libra. And the weird thing about Libra energy for me is that it makes us compare ourselves to others. And of course, that is not necessarily Libra energy um, vibrating at its most high, right? Um, but so I basically take this to mean that currently, and it, you don't need to be watching this during the full moon in Libra or during any kind of Libra, any anything, right? This is just Libra energy functioning in one of its like more lower vibrational states and that is perfectly fine for you to be going through this and I guarantee you that this journey through your comparing yourself to others I wouldn't get too caught up on this envy this word of envy here I mean sure you might be looking out of the world and going you know how come other people have that and I, I just can't ever seem to to get it no matter what I do I think this is more tuning into those feelings of frustration and those feelings of lack in your own life and it, it it's like it's bigger than than all of that. This is about frustration, like frustration, right? This is about frustration, about trying to figure out how to improve your life, right? And it might fall sometimes into this comparison game, comparing yourself to others in some way, shape, or form. So th the funny thing is, um, there is a purpose to all of this. There is a purpose to all this. There is something deeper for you to understand. And it's just that these feelings of self-comparison, these feelings of, I feel like there's two things going on, you know, um, a feeling like you're lacking something, right? A feeling of lack either in yourself or in your life um, and of comparing yourself to others. So let's find out like what, where is this journey taking you? Cause believe it or not, this is, this is a journey that you were on and these feelings of lack and comparison aren't the be all end all of your experience here. There is something to be understood. It just doesn't make sense right now. <laughs> okay. So first of all, you got the sun coming up. Okay. So that's two things for me. Again, funny. That's this. It's card number 20. It's clearly, you know, we're, we're talking about Libra energy in some way, shape or form. And I keep saying two things. So very interesting. So first of all, with the sun card, whatever you're lacking, it's going to be coming through for you. Okay. I have a very, very specific relationship with the sun card. The universe only brings this to me when it wants me to know that a blessing is on its way where the thing that you need most is coming, right? I say this specifically because when I personally draw the sun card, I, I like uh, so many times the thing I have been wanting whether it was money or some kind of um, other type of resource, it's like it comes, it comes. The sun is letting you know that the sun is coming out. The sun is finally rising, like dawn is finally approaching and the thing you need is coming, okay? So there's that, but this is also... Um, the journey that you were on is also um, healing and activating your sacral, or not your sacral. Well, that's funny now, now that I said that, right? So sacral is going to be in it for somebody, but typically the sign is your solar plexus, right? Your solar plexus, activating your solar plexus. So, you know, maybe for some, it's to, it's more feeling like the sacral. It could be balancing your sacral and your solar plexus. This is about balancing and healing those lower chakras, right? Because of course, whenever we have feelings of lack and comparison, it, it, that's something going, something wobbling in your lower chakras. Oh, it's funny. I was sitting there going, yeah, I mean, I know not everyone who watches my channel is a starseed, but many, many people who resonate with me the most are starseeds. And 
of course, I'm using the starseed tarot here. Um, and I was going to say, like, starseeds in particular struggle. We all struggle with our lower chakras because, damn, it, it, it's like damaging we had to damage our lower chakras just to be able to incarnate here, right? So for those of you who, are, who resonate as star seeds, <laughs> this, this is so big for you. It's like, take this thing, take it all the way big. You might find yourself being tempted to like, you know, in, in, you know, in those low moments when you're just really hurting, right? It's tempting to blame your problems on other people or to just feel like something is, you're t it's tempting to put that energy towards another person that you know, right? Or towards maybe a group on the planet or just some kind of system. But really take this as big as you possibly can and know that um, whatever you're working through, it, 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 it's like there's a there's a bigger soul picture here. You're healing a much bigger soul wound. It is not at all limited to this one life. And that is why everything that you're working through is kind of difficult, <laughs> difficult to work through. Because it's like, you know, if you feel like you are in lack in some way, shape, or form, it's, well, yeah, because you lost pieces of your soul on the dissension journey in order to get down into this density in order to live on earth, right? There's, it, it's all about those bigger soul pictures. And look at these cards that came up. And the, the two of crystals was stuck behind the five of swords. The two of crystals to me is coming into balance, coming into balance, but there can be a wobble while while you're trying to come into balance. And this five of swords sitting on top of it. So five of swords traditionally seen is that card of defeat. I am very much guided recently to reinterpret my understanding of the five of swords and to understand again that the, 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 the defeat is only its lowest frequency, right? It's a middle frequency might be something like apathy or just making an adjustment to your mindset, but its highest frequency is like complete spiritual surrender in like the best, most beautiful way that you can imagine, right? <sighs> letting go and releasing to me it feels like bitterness like letting go and releasing bitterness and of course it's easy to say that but how do you do it well um luckily for you guys this journey that you're on is actually intended to help you release this bitterness and that might involve having a long heartfelt discussion with somebody that might involve having a long heartfelt discussion with the universe like in your with your journal with your guides um there could be something you need to get off your chest. Um, but the, like, there's a message here. It's like, yes, you, you do need to express your feelings, whatever they are, because you need to get them out of you. But try to not be too attached to the feelings that you are expressing because your feelings are only the most, like, your feelings in terms of how you interpret them in your human life, right? Your human mind will be saying things like, this is my human, like, this is my problem in my life and this person might be at the root of it and this feeling and I need to do this. Those things are true and valid and it's like, yes, explore those and express them, but just keep in mind at all times that they are the micro reflection of the macro soul experience, right? There, There is something much deeper um, shifting inside of your soul. And so it's like, don't get too, too, too attached to the human level thoughts that you were having about your emotional experience. Does, does that make sense? Um, it, that doesn't mean that you, that you discount your human thoughts and emotions, but it, it's like, try to hold them gently, hold them softly so that you can express them and release them without creating unnecessary waves in your life, right? If you can allow yourself to work through this gently and with non-attachment, it will be easier for you to get to this point on, to get to the point on your journey where you release those feelings of envy and you release those feelings of lack and you release those feelings of bitterness. And then the, the sun shines again, right? The sun shines again. And I'm seeing for some, some people, um, uh, there's like, um, like cords attached to your solar plexus, cords attached to your solar plexus and you're breaking free of them. I mean, if you like to receive Reiki or any type of healing to help release those, you absolutely can, but just know that they, they will naturally release. That's actually what you're doing right now. This journey that is, this journey you were on is um, like igniting your solar plexus. So it burns away the cords of attachment that no longer serve you, right? So this journey through envy and comparison and lack is actually a journey of self-liberation, self-liberation. And the final card here is what does your heart want? Be free to manifest your heart's desire. Okay, with this card, very important message. 
where you need to allow yourself to admit what you actually want. And I, there's a thing here where, you know, sometimes when the, the universe is screaming something at you and everywhere you look, it's like every every YouTube video you see, every Instagram post you see, every single person you talk to, they're all telling you something. They're all telling you something. And sometimes that is the thing that the universe is trying to get you to understand. You've just been missing it, right? But other times, this is where you need to be really honest with yourself, right? Sometimes the thing that you keep seeing everywhere is actually something you're supposed to disagree with. <laughs> and sometimes it's actually something you need to disagree with. So if like, say there's something you've been seeing everywhere, it's like a message you've been getting everywhere. And it's like, everyone is telling it to you. Every single person you talk to is telling it to you. The internet is telling it to you. Everywhere you go, the billboards are telling it to you. And you're and, and it's just not sitting right with you. And you keep thinking, maybe you keep trying to like, make yourself agree with the thing that, that you keep seeing everywhere, but maybe you're not supposed to agree with it. Maybe you're not. Maybe that's the thing you're supposed to disagree with, right? So <laughs> that and that, okay, that. You need to get super, super, super honest with yourself about what is right for you, about what you actually want and what is something, what, what, what do you actually agree with, right? And don't be afraid to disagree with the entire universe, right? Because it might feel like, oh, I keep getting this message. Like the universe keeps sending me this message everywhere. I'm like inundated with it. You might need to disagree with it. Don't be afraid to disagree with it. That might be the thing that brings you the peace that you need. So that's actually how you can test that out, right? If there's a message you're getting from literally everywhere, just give yourself an experiment. Go, hey, what if, what if I just disagree with this? How will that feel? How do I feel if I completely reject that message and just say no? I see how that is valid for some people. I see how that could be useful for other people, but it's just not for me. It's just not for me. And I'm going to reject it and disagree with it respectfully and even with neutrality. But I'm just going to say, it's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me. It's not me. No, no. And see how that feels. Do you feel liberated? Do you feel peaceful? Do you feel like you have come to a resolution within yourself? Do you feel better? <laughs> if you feel better after disagreeing with the thing that the whole universe is telling you, then you know you are on your right path, right? There might be nothing, there might be nothing outside, nobody, you might have people in your life telling you you're completely wrong. You might continue to receive these messages from the universe that make you wonder, should I, should I be following? But no, right? If you feel better after coming to this decision, to coming to this disagreement, then you know that is the path that is right for you. So ultimately for you guys, trust the decisions that make you feel better inside. And it, it, if the, the, the thought you come to makes you feel better inside, then that is the path for you for right now. And ultimately learning to trust the feelings that make you feel better, those are the ones for you to trust. And that is the ultimate lesson of your journey right now. So, <laughs> wow, that was, a, that was a pretty intense first reading there. <laughs> <sighs> okay guys, sending you so much love and light. I'll talk to you later, bye. Card number two, what journey are you guys on for right now? Woman holding a heart, <laughs> number 44. This could be romantic for some of you. For others, this is just opening up to your emotional body, right? So this is opening up your heart. This is learning to wear your heart on your sleeves. This is learning to communicate from the heart. And basically, this is this is all about the heart, obviously, but all about um, getting comfortable with your feelings, right? Um, there's like two different paths for this, right? If, if for some of you, you know this is romantic and you're learning to open yourself up to receiving love, I feel like a lot of you may have been people who give love but haven't actually been very open to receiving love and that might be something you need to like consider about yourself, right? Have you always been giving love but maybe even giving love in a way that... It, it, this is, this is really, this is kind of strange, but I'm feeling it quite strongly. Um, it feels like somebody has been giving like love as a defense mechanism. It's like, if you, it's like, if I just give, 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 give enough love, then I don't actually have to receive any love. Um, as if it's like really unbalanced, strange that that might be just for one person that somebody just needs to take a look at that and see, is that you, does that resonate? Have you been giving love as a way of keeping people at a distance? Um, <laughs> 
So I'm just going to let that sit there because that's not everybody. That's just a couple of people. Um, for other people, this is just more generally um, on a journey of opening yourself up to deeper levels of intimacy, right? Emotional intimacy. It doesn't have to be romantic intimacy. It can be um, like confessing something to a friend, right? Um, finding that person who feels safe to share that secret with or to share that story with um, and actually learning that, you know, emotional vulnerability can help you um, reach those deeper le levels of intimacy with friends, with family, even with coworkers, if you want to like have an emotional chat at work, right? Um, or in romance, right? Um, for some of you, this is also opening up to your emotional experience, like in general, right? If you know that in, for most of your life, you have been very mind-based, um, very intellectual, um, you know, for some of you, this is deeply spiritual where you are leaving a path where you were um, even like an atheist or even really um, commit committed to scientific viewpoints to the exclusion of other viewpoints. And now you're opening up your heart, which is also opening up your intuition and you're getting deeply connected into your feelings and how your feelings can guide you through your experience of your reality. <laughs> so wow so there's as you can see like th there's this common theme here of opening up to your feelings opening up your heart opening up to more opening up to receiving more opening up to the emotional experience of your life but it can be manifesting in many different ways so a little bit complicated to discuss all of those in one reading <laughs> nine of swords dropping out of the mental body right the nine of swords um, is that anxiety, fear, sleepless nights, even even like um, the fear phase of spiritual awakening for some people where you are being, um, where you, you perceive attacks from entities, right? From parasitic entities and all of that. The nine of swords, it can run the whole gamut. Um, but your, this is that your journey is taking you away from that. Okay, that's what you're leaving behind. That's why you're opening up your heart. That's why you were learning to drop out of the mental body because your mental body has been overworked, has been overtaxed, and you've been thinking too much. You have been overthinking things. Um, the the nine of wands just um, flew out, and then I shuffled it back in. But that's like your your mind is kind of at the end of its rope, and so that's actually. <laughs> It's almost like you had to explore your mental body until you're done with it. And now you're done with it because now your mental body needs to take a break because it was over overactive. And so now you have no choice but to lean into your emotional body. Three of crystals. This is your opening up to interconnectivity and interdependence. That doesn't mean codependence, right? Interdependence, interdependence. Um, for some, this three of crystals is working, like literally working, working with others, right? It could even be like learning to work with your romantic partner, um, even going to, into business with them for somebody. <laughs> but it's like learning to work through your daily lives, learning to share the load of your daily lives with each other and with other people. For others, this is um, like learning to open up to receiving guidance from the universe, like from your guides, from your soul family, from your past on loved ones, through from the angels, from whatever consciousness you choose to tune into, right? It's opening up to receiving help, support, and guidance, like from higher realms, from the non-physical, right? It's opening up to that and knowing that you can ask the universe to send support to you and you can open up to that if you choose. You will, because the, the, the non-physical realms will only ever respect your choices and your free will. So you will only receive as much help for them as you are comfortable asking for. Um, so definitely a message for somebody is that there is more like energetic and spiritual support for you. There's also for everybody, there is more physical support for you that you have not wanted to entertain before. For somebody, this could be like hire someone to clean your house, right? If, if like you just can't stay on top of your house cleaning because you're busy, hire someone to clean your house, um, something like that, right? Ask a friend to help you pack and move. There's people who will support you if you choose to ask for that. Um, for others, this is like you, you've actually had yourself, since your heart, your heart has been kind of closed, um, your heart, sh like you're like literally blocks to your heart chakra has been kind of closed. You have been blocking yourself off from receiving literal like light from the universe, right? You haven't been receiving the light because you closed yourself off to it. And that is fine. And you had your reasons for doing that. And it's all part of your many like soul's 
like many lifetimes of having learned to block yourself off because of course you learned to block yourself off that was part of the dissension cycle that is how you got here that is how you were able to exist in your body by densifying yourself but now you are able to shed those layers of density those layers of density in your heart chakra and you no longer need them anymore and now if you choose you can open up to receiving like literally more energy from spirit from the universe from whatever you want to call it, you can receive more energy from above and you can see, receive more guidance, help and assistance all from the non-physical. And look, your ultimate card here is transformation. Hey, we got a pe card peeking through on the other side. <laughs> oh my God, guys. So these cards were stuck together. Your transformation, transformation into what? What was hiding? What like, cause like, look, she's on a path here. She's on a road, she's on the rainbow road and there's a portal at the end. So you're going through this doorway, you're going through this portal and what are you gonna find on the other side? What was hiding beneath the surface all along? 10 of pentacles, 10 of crystals here. And I love this 10 of crystals so, 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 so much because look, these are like stars connected. Look at this sacred geometry. Look at these interconnected triangles connecting all of these points of crystallized light together. It is amazing. So again, this is like, first of all, the 10 of crystals is coming into a bunch of money. Like literally this, <laughs> the 10 of crystals is ha having the physical material resources that you need in order to feel abundant in your life. Okay. So if you need money, the money is coming, right? If you need so physical support, the physical support is coming. But look at how this is also so spiritual. This is like the entire universe creating like a grid of stars, a grid, a network of souls to support whatever it is that you are doing. And you are on that journey to opening up your heart to connecting to the network. You, you guys are going to connect to the network, whatever that means for you, right? The physical network, the actual internet, the spiritual network, you're, 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 you're on the journey to connect to the network. And then that opens the floodgates for you to receive whatever it is that you decide you choose to receive, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you guys are literally moving on from the nine of swords, anxiety and fear through a transformation to receive all that your heart desires. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Card number three, what journey are you guys on? right now. Angel of love. I'm just taking a minute to look at this card because obviously with the angel of love, the first thing we kind of think about is romance. So yes, for somebody, if that's really the journey that you're on, then that is the journey that you are on. But honestly, look at look, look at the way she's standing here. She's like holding her her stomach. The first thing this made me think of is for somebody who is has been trying to start a family, right? Someone's trying to start a family. Someone's trying to have children or like expand their family in some way. For somebody, that's a message, right? It, it's it's going to happen. It's going to come through for you. You've been on this journey. And I feel like you guys are close, close to like the materialization of this. And actually, I want to read you guys the blurb from the book on this one. I'll just get the booklet out. Tender Connections. This beautiful angel comes with roses in her hair and rose-colored wings. She holds a rose quartz heart radiating tender and loving vibrations, bringing you compassion and affection. If you're looking for new love, this angel brings a message of its upcoming approach. Or if you're longing for a deeper, more intimate connection with someone already in your life, she's here to say that far greater tenderness is available to you. Either way, remember that your first intention for tenderness must be directed inward and the compassion that you demonstrate towards yourself will influence the energetic potential of these events in a significant way. The angel of love is smiling on you and forging connections in the energetic realm. Okay, so some of you might have watched card number two because this feels like a little bit similar since it's about love and the heart, but I do get a different vibe on this. For you guys, it feels more like... I don't, I don't actually feel, 
in general that you guys are like releasing blocks to your heart chakra. Like card number two, you know, it was about the heart chakra and love, but it was like clearing out the blocks in the heart. For you guys, I feel more like you're getting better at choosing where to put your love. Choosing like optimizing your love, optimizing the love in your life. Five of Wands, Three of Swords jumped out. Okay. Um, did somebody just go through a breakup? <laughs> or really have a big, big fight with their partner or, you know, even a friend or anything like that? Because, like, the Five of Wands is in its lower vibrations, right? Arguments, fighting, conflict. Um, moving into the higher vibrations of the Five of Wands, though, it's sitting in that meditative state while the chaos flies around you, right? While the chaos flies around you. But I feel like something has kind of burst your bubble a little bit because we got the Three of Swords. And it's that feeling of like a letdown, a letdown. Um, some kind of letdown with this. Um, this particular Three of Swords feels softer than most other Three of Swords because, look, she's just kind of, she's just sitting there. She's just hanging out. <laughs> you guys are just both kind of sitting on the ground. Um, there's been this, this let down because I feel like, what was I saying about optimizing like where you're sending love, where your love is going. I feel like for some of you, you've been seeking love in the wrong places. That has all been part of the journey of teaching you this lesson. And that's what I want to get at. What is like the lesson, the purpose of this journey? Two of Swords. <laughs> And I it also wanted the card that was underneath. I guess I'm just going to take both of these. Three of Wands and Six of Cups. Two of Swords, that indecision, that feeling of walking blind or trying to choose between two things. Some of you, there's two, like maybe you've even been trying to choose between two people or two paths in your life. And you've been wondering, like, am I on the right path? Like, where where is the way I'm feeling my way forward in the dark? Three of Wands, right? The, you're about to receive the return on your investment. Something is about to work out for you. And the funny thing with the Six of Cups here is that it's like it's coming from a past life. <laughs> It's like it's coming out of a past life. Um, for me, the Six of Cups is such a past life card. So that whenever the Six of Cups comes out, especially this one for me, where she's kind of looking back at this castle in the past, um, it is important for you guys to know that the thing you're working through is like tied to past lives. It's not just this one life because you might have trouble understanding why this is happening. Like why whatever it is is happening. Why is it happening? You have that feeling of why, 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 why. It's, I don't really want to use the word karma, but for some of you, if you work through the lens of karma, you might, um, that might mean something to you, right? You might understand certain people in your life as being karmic connections, stuff like that. You might understand that you are working through past life karma, like straightening things out, right? Doing things better this time, having the opportunity to do things better this time, um, not as a punishment, just as a continuingly continuing to iron out the kinks. It's like last time around you were ironing your shirt and you missed some wrinkles. And so now you're going to go to have one more pass and iron out those wrinkles is what's really happening here. Um, I want one more card on this because I'm just staring back at the angel of love card and it's like, the answer here is self-love. The answer here is love yourself first. The answer here is love yourself first. Your power, like your, your power, your light comes from how much you love yourself. And if you are not allowing yourself to love yourself <laughs> just the way you would love anything else in your life, then you're cutting off all of your own power. Ah, and here you go. You are a child of the cosmos. The intelligence of the universe lies within you, within you. You are the universe in a single drop, right? A lot of the time we feel like we are a tiny drop in the ocean of the universe. That's not how it is. The entire universe is inside of you. The entire universe is inside of you. It, it's, 
it's all inside of you, every single thing. There is nothing that is not inside of you. And I know that's a thing that we all kind of say because we kind of learn to say that when we get into spirituality, right? But there are experiences that you can have in this life that make you realize that, that ha like you experience it. You actually have an embodied experience of understanding that it is all inside of you. The entire universe is inside of you. The universe is not out there. It's actually inside of you, right? And of course there is a, ref a manifested and reflected universe outside of you, but it's like, that's, that's secondary. It, it's being reflected from inside of you. The entire universe is inside of you. So that I think is the ultimate lesson on this journey. That is the, that is the thing you were heading towards. It is towards that experience of actually understanding what people mean when they say that the universe is inside of you. The whole universe is inside of you all of it, all of it. Um, so if you already kind of know that in your head, and I'm sure all of you do, because you've probably all, <laughs> you know, maybe even said that before to other people, you've like, you know, it's everything's within, right? Everything is within. A lot of you probably say that all the time and you know that, but there's an experience to be had of like having that really click into place because it's, this is one of those spiritual journeys where you know something intellectually, you know it in your head, you read it, maybe you even teach it, maybe you tell it to other people when they're having a low point, but mm, there's a deeper experience of it to be had, an embodied experience of it. And th those are so important. Those, those are the big, the big deal um, checkpoints on your journey when you go, wow, I just experienced that thing I've been preaching for years. Maybe I thought I understood it. I thought I understood it because I said it and I thought it, but you didn't actually have an experience of it. So this experience of understanding that the entire universe is inside of you, that it's like you're, nothing is the same after that because it completely clicks into place everything that you've been learning. It's like a graduation day. It is a clicking into place of everything you've been teaching yourself, right? Because, you know, when you read something or when you watch a YouTube video and you hear somebody talking or telling you something and it resonates, you kind of think that it's them teaching it to you. That's not how this works, right? Even if I'm saying something and it's you feel like it's me telling it to you, it's not. This is you teaching yourself. You aligned with this video, right? And you picked the right card. It's funny. People always tell me like, wow, Shy, like you were so spot on that like card number three or whatever was so spot on. But it's like, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything. I just sat here and like talked. Like I like, I, what did I do? I sat here and pulled some cards and I talked. You're the one who found the video. You're the one who picked the right card. You're the one who brought yourself to, to the messages that you were hearing. And you are the one teaching yourself, right? It's like, I can't teach you anything. If I say anything that resonates with you, it's because you brought yourself to the reflection, to this inf to this external reflection of information that is resonating inside of you. You just wanted to see it outside of yourself so that you could notice it a little better. So even when somebody else is teaching you, it's actually something inside of yourself that you just held a mirror up and now you're seeing it outside of yourself. So you're really teaching yourself even if someone else is teaching you, right? Nobody needs any teachers. Nobody can really teach anybody. We only teach ourselves because you are a child of the cosmos and the entire universe lives inside of you. And that is what you're teaching yourself right now. You are leading yourself. You are on the journey, leading yourself to the experience of experiencing, experiencing that the universe is inside of you. And I don't know how more clearly to put it than that. That is the best I can do today. So you guys are about to go on a wild ride and I am so excited for you to have that visceral, visceral experience of being the universe. So sending you so much love and light. Bye. Okay, card number four. I feel a lot of fire with you guys. Something fiery. <laughs> I don't know, something fiery happened. And let's find out what journey are you guys on right now? Ooh, <laughs> woman holding a coin. I have my left arm like way stretched out up to the sky. I do that a lot when I'm doing readings and I realize that nobody ever knows that that's what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, you guys, that feeling, it's like opening up your heart, opening up your chest to like receive to receive, to receive. Withholding a coin, I mean, this could manifest in many different ways. This is 
but of course we want to talk about money, right? <laughs> You're having your business take off, having your creative project take off, having something manifest and materialize. Maybe it's not specifically money for you, but it's definitely something that's going to be bringing you money, bringing you security, bringing that feeling of abundance, bringing you that feeling of being a fucking queen or king or ruler or whatever you want to be. It's like, this is, you're on the journey to feeling like you have arrived. Okay. The, the on the journey to feeling like you have arrived to wherever you want to go to whoever you want to be. It's just like, you've done it. You have done it. You have done it. That's what you want to feel. And it's going to be like the conclusion to what feels like a very long journey. I want a very specific card in here. I'm trying to get it out. And I, it just really struck me. Oh, you know what? It's not even, um, the back of these cards, just looking at this one out, like out of the corner of my blurry vision, it looked like a diamond. It looked like a diamond. None of these are really diamonds, but it looks like a diamond. So that seems synchronous to me. Ooh, the moon as above, so below. Okay. My new thing with the, with the moon card, cause I'm always on a journey of learning, um, additional, vibrations of every tarot card archetype <laughs> my new thing with the moon is as above so below as above so below so you're essentially embodying the energy of your higher self and you're gonna wake up in the morning and realize hey all this time i've been trying to become my higher self but what if i'm already living it what if this is what if i'm already of course there's further on the journey to go there's more embodiment to happen there's more ascension to take place there's more evolution to take place but what if what if you should take a minute and celebrate where you are right now? What if you should take a minute and give yourself credit for everything that you have done this far? What if you should take a moment and really realize how far you have come in the last year, the last 10 years, the last 30 years? How, like you are exponentially more than you once were and it is time to notice that about yourself. <laughs> nine of crystals, nine of pentacles. That feeling of exactly what I've been talking about, right? Um, financial independence, financial security, but like in an independent way, right? The, the, ten, the Ten of Pentacles is that one that is all um, connecting with the community and having like legacy money, right? For you, it's like, it's about you. It's about you and your journey. It is about you succeeding at the thing you told yourself you were going to do. It's about you realizing your intentions. It's about you achieving your goals, right? And like, we even have like Orion here, right? It's, you are on the journey to realizing that you can count on yourself and that you can achieve something when you set your, when you set out to do it. It's like you, you get there, you on your own, you do this you can succeed. And it's like the, the, this journey that you're on to this level of <laughs> queen of wands <laughs> to this level of self-empowerment is just the beginning. It's like this thing that you, this experience that you're going to have where you are going to feel like you have finally done it. it. For a second, it might feel like the end. It might feel like your accomplishment. It might feel like, okay, now I'm, I'm good. I'm done. I did it. Like drop the mic and walk off. But you're going to realize that that was just the first tip of the iceberg. That was just the first baby step. That was just the very first step of the mountain. And this is not, not to make you feel like, oh, you have so much farther to go. It's like, you're going to be feeling like, wow, what can I do next? What can I accomplish now? What else can I do? It's like, wow, I in, in doing this accomplishment, in, in receiving this thing, in doing this manifestation, it's going to be like, wow, I, it, it opens up your horizons in a whole new way. You just go, wow, the whole universe just opened up to me. Look at all that, all that is left to explore. Look at all that it, there is left to accomplish and to do and to experience and to feel and to perceive. And it's just, it's going to open up a whole world for you. It's going to be like <laughs> night and day, guys. It's going to feel like you woke up and your whole world has shifted, has changed. And you're going to feel like, wow, was I ever, re ever really even alive before this? You're going to look back at your life and go, wow, it's like I was asleep. I, I used to be asleep and now I'm alive. And now I have all of this energy to go do and accomplish and to be and to become. And it's just an exponential. Your journey is exp exponentially going to be unfolding. But it begins with <laughs> achieving some type of achievement like reception of resources some some type of material experience that really reflects this to you in a grounded way where you can point at that and go that was the moment my life 
changed. That was the moment I had my first great victory. That was the moment where I really re realized that like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. So <laughs> that that's, that's basically what I got to say for you guys, because you are about to take off in a whole new way. And that is amazing. And I'm sending you so much love and light on your journey. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, card number five. What journey are you guys on right now? <sighs> Anxiety. Okay, so you guys are going through something, right? You're going through something. You don't feel good. You want it to stop. <laughs> you want it to stop. Let's get some more cards for you. They're showing me um, somebody like traveling through a landscape that they do not like. Um, and this, you know, the imagery that will make sense will be different for everybody. It's like maybe you really don't like deserts and there you are like driving through the desert for days and days and days. Or maybe you really don't like swamps and here you are having to walk through a swamp and your boots got stuck in the mud and now you're walking through the swamp barefoot and you're just, it's like so distasteful. It's so distasteful. So that that is like the representation of the energy that you were in. So you are, you are having to travel through an energetic environment that you do not like and it is causing that that is the cause of this anxiety right um i feel very strongly that somebody is going like is there something wrong with me is there something wrong with me there's nothing wrong with you it is natural and normal to react <laughs> to have anxiety in your situation there's nothing wrong with you um but that doesn't mean that you can't change your experience right you can change your experience so that you can travel through this energetic environment with less anxiety with less anxiety you don't need to feel the anxiety of course that doesn't mean it's easy to get rid of it um, but think less about getting rid of the anxiety and think more about just what can you do with the environment that you are in what can you do with it right if you're stuck in a swamp and you're going through a swamp it's like well at least there's lots of greenery around, right? At least there's lots of greenery around. Um, you know, and I'm like, the side of my head is so itchy all of a sudden. It feels like I have a mosquito bite there and it feels like there's bugs crawling on my left ear, but there are no mosquito bites there and there are no bugs on my ear. So that's um, going on with somebody. <laughs> um, um, I think less about trying to get rid of the anxiety and think more about trying to invite in feelings that you do enjoy, right? If you're in the desert, well, at least your feet are dry, right? If you're in the desert, at least the sun is shining. Find the things that you can focus on and like use that as a starting point, right? That's not going to be the be all end all of your experience. Let's find out what journey that you're on because um, it's like your journey, your, your life's journey has taken you through this detour and you don't like where the detour has gone. It's like you had to take this detour but I mean, actually, you didn't really have to. You could have chosen otherwise. You could have, but maybe the alternate route would have been even less less enjoyable, right? For whatever reason, you did choose this path and it is going to be for your highest good and it is going to work out and it is going to get you where you want to go. It's just going to be unpleasant for a bit, exactly like having to hike through a swamp to get to the beautiful, pristine, like mountain on the other side, right? Whatever, whatever it is that you want, it's on the other side. You're just going through an annoying landscape at the moment. Star ancestors, hidden secrets, lost wisdom, look a little deeper. Look a little deeper, guys. <laughs> um, that's, it's like the, that's just what I was saying, right? If you're in the swamp, at least the grass is green. If you're in the desert, at least your feet are dry and the sun is shining. Um, you took yourself into this environment, this energetic environment, right? This energetic environment. You could be in a completely normal physical environment, but your energetic environment is distasteful to you. Look a little deeper there. There, there is treasure for you to find here. Um, 
It's like, look at the back, look, dig around in the back of your closet. There's something for you to find there. If you're stuck talking to somebody you don't really like, talk to them a little more deeply. Can you have a deep conversation with them and find like that there is in fact something that you agree on, that there is something that can be found here. If you're working a job you don't like, it's like, well, you're in that job for like a reason, otherwise you wouldn't be there. <laughs> um, that's just how I see the universe, right? That everything has a point, no nothing purposeless is allowed to happen. That would be a waste of the universe. So if, if you're stuck in a job you don't like, it's like there's still something for you to learn there, right? Maybe there's somebody for there for you to meet. Maybe there's an important skill that you were learning that you will then in the future be able to use for, like it'll, it'll come in really handy. Like it'll be really important for you to learn that skill, right? Messenger, serious energy, bringing harmony and balance. And what is this other card? Empathic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what is not yours. Okay, so... The, a lot of this anxiety that you are feeling is not even yours to begin with. Is not even yours to begin with. It's like... <sighs> with this serious card, it feels like you are like like you are the messenger. Sometimes this messenger card can mean that you are receiving messages. And I mean, you are always receiving messages. But specifically with this, I feel like you are bringing someone else a message. And it could be someone in particular. Other, if it's not someone specific, it's like you are bringing a message to the earth. You are bringing light to the earth, right? You are the light keeper. You are bringing the energy. You are bringing the light. And it's like your your mission, if you want to call it that, or like your path or your purpose or your road or your journey has taken you through an area that you just don't like, but there is a message for you to deliver on the other side. There is something for you to do on the other side, but it's not even about getting to the other side because people along the way and the very ground you walk on like receives the light that you bring, right? You are bringing light to the world. You are literally bringing light to the earth and the place you are in right now needs it, right? The place you are in right now needs it. Um, unfortunately <laughs> for you is that you are also picking up on all of the difficult emotions of the people around you and even the difficult emotions of that are like embedded in the earth. This might be specific to one person, one or two people, where if you are in a place that has an extremely long, I mean, and I mean like like centuries, or like hundreds of years or thousands of years of like war and violence, right? There's many, many different places on the planet this could, this could apply to. But if you think about different places on the earth, right, there are some places that there has been many, 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 many more years of war and violence and just oppression and negativity that has been built that it, 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 like all of that stuff built builds up in the earth itself like literally in the soil and in the rocks and also of course in the in the in the earth grids right in the ley lines in the energetic grids it's all built up there so it for yes you're absorbing um empathically the emotions and energy of people around you but for some of you it's coming up like out of the earth itself out of the like the earth grids the crystalline grids itself um they keep showing me europe you know they keep showing me europe in in my mind um just as a quick example right there are places in europe that have had way more severe incidences of recent violence than for example some places in canada right just just because of how history has gone and it, it's like for somebody that's something to think about how the literal ground you walk on how it has been soaked <laughs> with energy that is unpleasant and it's like it's bubbling up from out from the surface um and so that that is why no, no matter where this no matter where you are and no matter kind of what the energy is like and where it is coming from um you you're on this journey of cleaning it you're like this is like a light worker mission is what this feels like to me like a light worker mission a starseed mission however you you want to call it like you have been assigned to walk this path because you you are healing the earth <laughs> like literally you're on this journey of healing the earth and i feel like you haven't um owned that enough not that you need to own it but that it would be beneficial for you to understand and really appreciate and love yourself for what you were doing right because imagine you went to work in a hospital as a janitor and you like forgot that you were going to work for a reason like you know maybe your reason was 
to get paid to feed your family or whatever and say you forgot that and you just got there and now you're just like cleaning bathrooms in a hospital and you're like why am I doing this right it's like if you're not connected to your why if you're not connected to your why then nothing you're doing makes sense so if you're in an environment energetic or physical or like the people environment right the people around you if you're in an environment that just feels to be drenched in negativity or drenched in unpleasant emotions and you don't know why you're there if you're disconnected from that why then it's going to be really it's, it's going to just suck <laughs> it's going to suck and it's going to be hard for you to understand like what you're doing and every, nothing will make any sense so you are there for a reason you're absolutely there for a reason you're doing an incredibly important like spiritual service and this is like it's funny a lot of the time I tell people like don't worry so much about your spiritual mission because I think that kind of can get a lot of us like stressed out or confused or make us feel like there's something we have to be doing stuff like that so I don't really typically push like think about your mission a lot because I don't really I don't live like that basically I don't live like that so I don't encourage other people to live like that but for you guys I think it will actually help you for you to consider and like feel into your spiritual mission because I feel like you guys haven't really taken into account the fact that you are here to do something. Like, you are here doing something. It's not that you're here to do something. You are here doing something and you're doing it naturally just by living your life. So there is a bigger picture to your life and why you're here and it goes beyond just you. So of course there is you and your life and all of your life cycles and all of the things. You have your own personal life and reasons for being here, but you also have a bigger like cosmic universal reason for being here and it is to real like one of the things you do naturally by existing where you are is clearing dark stuck negative bad unpleasant energy clearing it up out of the earth clearing it up out of the ley lines like you guys are grid workers you guys are empathic grid workers pulling like pulling up garbage pulling up junk pulling up sludge bad old stuck ancestral energy up out of the earth and you're releasing it <laughs> you're releasing it and releasing it to be recycled and clarified and, and peered out and like purified right you're releasing it and so uh, the big 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 emphasis like on the physical ground like on the physical earth yes for some of you it might be more the people that you deal with and you're basically helping them heal by like empathically feeling their feelings and then releasing them but there's a big emphasis here on you guys being grid workers and light workers um and light keepers you know whatever kind of word you resonate with um but it's specifically that you're working with the grids and the are work you're working with the earth itself um and healing the energy there and it's like <laughs> for whatever reason you guys haven't really given yourself enough credit for all of the work that you were doing so actually feeling into the fact that you are here working a spiritual mission i think could be very empowering for you and can help give you context about like why your life is the way it is and why you have challenges and why you struggle and why you suffer and why you feel this anxiety right it's because you're like you're cleaning the earth <laughs> you're cleaning cleansing clarifying purifying the earth and yeah that makes you anxious that is a side effect of that um but you can you you as you continue to feel into how you work as a light worker and into how you are as a grid worker and everything you will learn to do what you do without the anxiety right you are not doomed to feel this anxiety forever and i would actually say that your path here is to learn how to do what you already are doing but doing it with more joy with more fun with more freedom and without all the anxiety right you can do it without feeling bad about it you can you can do it while feeling joy in it right you can you can you can feel joy instead of anxiety while still doing your mission <sighs> you are healing your heart the heart hurts but it will mend in time it will mend in time um i just had some cards fall but <laughs> anyway um I feel with this that number 33 by the way um it's like I can feel all of this energy flowing through your heart and as your heart evolves into higher frequency versions of itself like as your heart heals and grows and expands that's going to enable you to be much more effective doing this like empathic clearing service right doing this empathic clearing service because i think part of the struggle right now is that you feel anxiety like other people's anxiety and the anxiety that is embedded in the earth resonates with your heart because you do having you have your own anxiety in your heart right and things outside of you resonate inside of you when there is something for it to resonate with so if you are 
susceptible to picking up on other people's anxiety, it is because there is some anxiety inside of you. Um, it doesn't mean that there has to be a lot, but just think about it. If you have like a little bit of anxiety inside of you, then if somebody comes by with a lot of anxiety, their lots of anxiety vibrates with, because it resonates with, it vibrates with your anxiety. And then since you're so empathic and open, your anxiety starts vibrating out of control. It, it's like <laughs> you only have a little bit of anxiety left to your own devices, but when you feel someone else's anxiety, now your anxiety is out of control, like super out of control. <laughs> so the more you he do your own work of healing and releasing your own, you know, you're just doing your heart healing, right? Doing your heart healing. Then you will naturally become less susceptible to like resonating with other people's unpleasant emotions, right? And that will just allow you to do your work healing the earth from a place of joy instead of from a place of anxiety. So I feel like I want like one more thing for you guys. Let's, let's just get a little piece of advice. <laughs> I close my eyes when I'm shuffling these. Willingness to grow. <sighs> Outer voices declare, don't leap, hold back. They challenge us. How can you be sure you'll make it? Yet inner voices are your soul and spirit whispering, leap. Because they are privy to the ways of the divine. They know that a net has already been placed to catch you. Yet, you continue to dither between the here and the there, wondering, what was I thinking? It is a fear that is trying to ever more insistently to seduce you back into habitual surroundings. Pay it no attention. Your journey towards greater fulfillment has long ago started. There you go. It's take a leap of faith time. <laughs> take a leap of faith. Do not let fear hold you back. Do not let fear hold you back because that fear... The fear, the anxiety, right? The fear and anxiety isn't really yours. Most of it is coming from external sources. And it's just that the fear that is around you makes the fear inside of you feel so much bigger than it is. So in releasing fear, then you free yourself from all these things you don't want to be feeling. <laughs> it all comes down to releasing fear because anxiety comes from fear, right? So you are on this journey to... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. Yours is a little bit more um, energetically based than the others. So you or guys are on this journey to ultimately freeing yourself from fear and anxiety so that you can feel more confident and capable, not just only in your life and living your life and living whatever it is that you want to do in your life, but also like doing your spiritual mission and for you guys learning and like feeling into your spiritual mission, I think will be very empowering and liberating for you. So it's like an awakening to your spiritual purpose. And I think I'm going to leave you guys there. So sending you so much love and light on your journey. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, card number six. What journey are you guys on right now? <laughs> Rest and rejuvenation. What up? I hope some of you have a vacation booked or maybe you're watching this on a beach somewhere. <laughs> this is the time to give yourself what you need, what your soul needs right? In order to rest and re rejuvenate. If you guys have had like a 10 of wands incident lately where you just woke up and realized you had just too much 
happening, right? Just too much on your plate, too much can't handle it. Somebody needs to give themselves permission to take a break. <laughs> as soon as I say that, I can hear like these these words coming up like, but I can't because this, I can't because that, this, this and that, all of these things, all of these things. Somebody feels like all of these things are stopping you from taking a break. It's time to get really honest with yourself about how much of that is actually really, really, really the case. <laughs> um, so there might need to be a shift in perspective here about like what you prioritize, what you take on, what you outsource to others, and what you just let go. What just doesn't need to happen. I can already tell you for somebody, somebody here is a parent. Somebody here is trying to parent their children the way they were parented. Somebody has a lot of expectations on themselves about how to be a good parent. And you might put these rules like, just as an example, somebody might think I need to cook dinner for my family five nights a week and we need to sit around the dinner table five nights a week and have a proper family dinner. And if I don't have a proper family dinner that I cooked five nights a week, then I'm a bad parent and my family isn't going to have enough time together and everything's going to fall apart. Something like that, right? That's just one example of how this could be going. Um, so take a moment to reassess if that is really the case, right? So look at your actual goal there. If your goal is to create an environment where your family spends quality time together, good, stick with that. Does that have to happen around the dinner table? Just as an example, maybe you could do have some, maybe you guys could just find some other way of eating, right? Maybe everyone cooks their own dinner, right? My family, we did a thing called MYO. We wanna have MYO for dinner? That was make your own, make your own. So everybody would just eat when they felt like it. You know, I ate a lot of bagels. My mom cooked a lot, right? And she did the whole family dinner thing a lot of the time, but sometimes we'd be like, we're gonna MYO and it was make your own and I would just eat a bagel and it was fine. I was still a healthily nourished teenager, right? <laughs> um, something like that, right? And so can you find other ways of creating that family time without actually doing it with this strict rule about it being around the dinner table five nights a week. Like that's an example here, right? Shift your perspective, shift your rules, shift your expectations because your expectations that you're putting on yourself is making you drown, right? Making you suffocate. <laughs> the magician. So let yourself like remember that you make the rules of how you live your life, right? For somebody, like this is like really dropping out of social conditioning, like really dropping out of social conditioning, right? Rest and rejuvenate. Somebody has learned that like resting is selfish, that taking a break is selfish. I'm getting, this is like sixth house energy. This is Virgo energy. This is somebody not giving themselves a break. Knight of Wands and five of <laughs> five of cups um the, like this five of cups it, it's like you are afraid that people would be disappointed in you if you make this change but there is a change you must make and th the change is just allowing yourself to take a break allowing yourself to take a load off allow yourself to take a road off a, a road off <laughs> allow yourself to take a load off because this this five of cups right traditionally seen as disappointment doesn't have to be seen this way this is emotional change this is a change to your emotional body this is like a releasing of emotions that no longer serve you this is like releasing feelings of guilt feelings of shame feelings of not living up to your ancestors like feelings of not being a good enough parent right this is like feeling like your parents did a so much better job than you but that's absolutely not true right that's absolutely not true it's like feelings of guilt, feelings of social expectations, feelings of expectations you were putting on yourself are stopping you from getting the rest and rejuvenation that you need. Um, I want a different deck. So what happened, what happened in your past, right? This could be childhood, this could be past lives, this could be yesterday. <laughs> what happened in your past that made you feel guilty about resting? If you were to take an entire weekend and just veg out on the couch, eating pizza and drinking wine and watching Netflix, right? Would you feel guilty about that? Why? Do 
don't <laughs> step out of your comfort zone, North Node. So when, when I said what happened in your past, right? What happened in your past that made you feel guilty about resting? I was thinking South Node. And so what comes out is North Node. Step out of your comfort zone. And funnily enough for you guys, stepping out of your comfort zone is actually doing less do less. Um, also with this, I tend to see North Node journeys in two, two, I feel like there are two basic different North Node journeys, right? One of them is get your shit together. <laughs> and th that would be like a Capricorn North Node is get your shit together, right? A cat or, or like a, any North Node in the 10th house, that's get your shit together and go do work and go figure out how to be successful. The other North Node journey is chill the fuck out like, which is my North Node. I have a Pisces North Node in the fourth house. And that is all about releasing, 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 releasing all expectations, releasing all standards, all of it. So you guys, I feel one way or the other. I mean, some of you could still have a Capricorn North Node, but maybe it's the way it's aspected or the house it's in, it makes it a, a relaxed, a relaxing journey. It makes it a journey of letting go, right? A journey of letting go. So step out of your comfort zone and allow yourself to chill out. I'm. This is also really Saturnian vibes because the way I explained the node, the North Node journeys, the get your shit together or chill the fuck out, that's also what I say about Saturn, right? And the, the, what I said, something... I'm aware of how I'm talking. <laughs> um, I can hear them myself talking. And this is the way I tend to sound when Saturn's influence is coming through, right? This is how I feel when I channel Saturn. I feel like, you know, <laughs> the great Saturn thumb coming down from above telling you to like release the stone. Um, some of you, do you know the song The Grudge by Tool? It might resonate, right? Um, Saturn comes back around to... I mean, there's a whole lyrics, right? But it's basically Saturn comes back around and is going to teach you to let go of something. Otherwise it will drown you, right? You, there's something you need to let go of or it will drown you. You will drown because it's holding you down and weighing you down. It's like you're trying to swim with an anvil tied around your waist, right? Um, yeah. So why, why <laughs> the bottom of the deck is new, mo new moon in Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just funny so your hard work is paying off yes but that's also the this 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 energy of hard work this energy of hard work this capricorn energy of hard work is the bottom of the deck is the energy you're moving on from right the energy you're moving on from and then now we're seeing surrender to the divine full moon i do happen to be recording this on the full moon in libra okay <laughs> so you guys are on a journey of surrender a journey of surrender a journey of working smarter and not harder, a journey of leaning, letting go and receiving, a journey of manifesting instead of like building. It's like you shouldn't have to build a castle out of blocks. You should be able to just wave your magic wand and have it manifest. And you know what? There's a lot more in your life that you can simply receive if you stop doing it yourself. Because um, you guys, I feel, are extremely cap capable. Maybe a lot of you, like, are Capricorns or have, like, you know, Capricorn somewhere. Like, something, <laughs> something emphasized with Capricorn or Saturn, right? Very capable people. Very used to hard work. Very used to doing it all yourself. Very used to like being the best at what you do very used to going um i'll just do it all myself because it's faster better and everything is better when i just do it myself and i i i totally like i totally understand you guys right i have five uh i have a five placement capricorn stellium in the second house my son is conjunct saturn okay in capricorn i i get this this is this is like really capricorn energy see you guys are all about letting go of that like it doesn't have to be Capricorn right but that's just that literally came up like twice so <laughs> you guys are on this journey to learning how to let go and relax like there's not really anything else to say about it you're learning to let go and relax for some of you it's like social conditioning right for some of you it's letting go of um internal control controlling issues right like I'm I as I've said before and I'll say it again I'm a recovering um, I'm, a, I'm a recovering control freak. <laughs> um, so some of you, that's going to resonate as well, right? Letting go of the of the need to control your... And it's like letting go of the need to control yourself. Letting go of the need to control your expectations and your standards. And allowing yourself to let things slide. But know that you don't need to let everything slide. You don't need to completely let go of your standards and expectations. You might actually have experience that make you go, Oh, so I don't want to let my standards go that far because I don't want to end up like that, right? But maybe you can let your standards go a little bit, right? It's like, 
<laughs> example that comes to mind is I love to shower every single day because the shower is my happy place and if I don't shower before bed, I can't sleep, right? So I shower every single day. But there's like one, literally one day a year where I will get into such a like, slide mode i'll just be like i'm done i'm done i'm done with everything that i'll skip a shower like literally one day like out of the entire year i won't shower and for me that is like an extreme act of letting myself slide <laughs> skipping a shower for a single day and i know a, a lot of people don't shower every day right because they don't need to they don't it really if you didn't you know if you didn't get all sweaty then you're not dirty and you don't need to shower every day and that's fine but for me skipping a shower one day a year is like an extreme act of letting go <laughs> So the way, my point is the way this manifests for you is going to be unique to you and you can decide how far you let things slide, but definitely let things slide because you need to rest and rejuvenate. And this is going to be really important because once you allow yourself to rest and rejuvenate, you're going to come back at it so much with so much more vigor and verve. Past life emotion lives in you. You are expressing more, it is releasing. What did I say? What happened in the past? Why do you feel guilty about vegging out on the couch all weekend, drinking wine and watching Netflix? You shouldn't feel bad about that, right? You shouldn't, you can You can allow yourself to have that. Um, this is like, like life, this feels to me honestly like lifetimes of service, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of hard work and service. Um, but guess what? The life, the energy this time around, the energy in this lifetime doesn't require you to work that hard anymore. It does not. In fact, the universe is asking you to let go. The universe is asking you to slow down, to relax, to rest, to rejuvenate and letting you know that that is actually how you can be of most service in this lifetime. Because remember, when you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix, eating pizza, drinking wine, you, that you're doing energy work. Maybe that's when your guides are going to be like working on your light body, working on your electromagnetic field, right? You, like you need to stop and rest and relax in order to do a lot of this very specific like energetic work on yourself to allow it to be done on yourself. You need to be able to you need to be sleeping, right? You need to be sleeping lots. You need to be resting and relaxing be, um, specifically. Okay. So um, I need to get something else. Um, where's the card I want? Um, specifically, <laughs> I mean, so th this is the second part of this message. Okay. This first part has just been about how you guys need to like, you know, let go and, and rest and, um, be less hard on yourself and work less hard and all of that. But there is a very, very specific reason for this coming up within the next, like within the next lunar cycle, right? So within the next like month, there's going to be a very specific, like act energetic activation upgrade like there's going to be work being done um it's going to be different for everybody depending on like what's going on at the time you see this video there's going to be people watching this over many 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 years so the specific upgrade or activation you will receive information on what that is um like through other signs and synchronicities right but there is gonna it, it's gonna require you to like give yourself that time right? To go on a vacation. Maybe some of you need to specifically go on a vacation because in that, that physical spot on the planet, there will, there will be a specific reason for you to, to, to be there doing soul retrieval, um, visiting a place where you were in a past life, or just the energy there is going to be really conducive to this activation, healing upgrade, whatever it is for you. Um, others of you are just going to need to like sleep a lot for three days, right? Sometimes these energetic shifts we go through are just so taxing that we just need to sleep like a lot. Other times you, you need to literally stop moving so that the that the energy can integrate, right? So there's going to be something really big for you to integrate. And so I feel like you guys might need some motivation to slow down and to stop. And so this is kind of like the carrot on the stick. They're saying it's like if you just slow down for five minutes, <laughs> preferably like five days, you know, if you can, even if that even if you're still going to work, it's like for, for one whole week, can you just not do anything when you get home from work? Can you just sit like, can you just relax? Can you just read a book, right? Can you just slow down? Um, like stop talking to people on the phone if, if that's what you typically do when you get home from work, right? Um, because you will be rewarded by this beautiful upgrade, activation, calibration, healing thing by giving yourselves the chance to slow down. <laughs> Fourth house, roots. That's really funny that that comes up after I was talking about my north node in the fourth house, right? You need to grow. This is about growing some roots, growing some roots. And this doesn't have to mean putting down roots. Um, 
you know, if you're the kind of person who doesn't really plan on living, if, you're, if you don't plan on living where you are for the rest of your life, right? This doesn't have to mean putting down roots where you are, but this is like healing your roots, healing your root chakra, right? Healing your connection with the earth, getting more in tune with your body. This resonates so many ways, but it is about healing, activating, calibrating your roots. Um, and it's like, you have been a rock doomed to rolling. <laughs> um, and so you haven't had a chance to gather any moss. It's time to slow down that rock, to allow the rock to grow a little bit of moss, right? Don't be afraid of the moss. Don't be afraid of the moss that grows on your rock when the rock stops rolling, right? It's okay for that rock to put down some roots. You know, now I'm seeing like the, the moss might grow up around your rock and it might feel like you're getting, some of you are afraid of being tied down. Like, wow, some of you really don't want to be tied down. You're not going to be tied down, you know, because you know what? When it's time for your rock to start rolling again, they're showing me, it, you're just going to rip up those roots, right? You're just going to rip up because they're not really roots. It was like the moss attached you to the grass of the forest, right? You're just going to be able to rip on up through of that. So just know that if you stop and slow down and put, even if you put down some roots, even if you grow some moss, it's not a cage. This is very important. It is not a cage. You are not being trapped. I promise you, the universe wants you to know this more than anything else. If this is the only thing you take away from this reading, you are not being trapped, okay? Roots are not a trap. Moss is not a trap. You are not being trapped. Whatever is happening, it is not a trap. It is not a trap. It is not a trap. Nope. You have freedom and free will, and you will have op many opportunities in the future to keep on rolling, to keep on moving, and to do whatever it is that you want to do, you're not being trapped, right? For some reason, you guys associate slowing down and stopping with being trapped. You're not being trapped, you're not being trapped. So <laughs> you guys are on a journey to receiving or to resting, recovering, rejuvenating, okay? You're also on the journey to receiving a deep spiritual upgrade, activation, healing, and I'm going to get a final message here. I close my eyes when I draw these cards. Sing your song. Transform your worries into love notes for your divine friend to offer to the world. Let your deepest feelings inspire the composition of a new harmony. Recognize this as another form of the sacred expression of your soul's desire to remember the answer to life's most important questions. Why am I here? Am I living according to my true nature? Am I offering enough love to a torn world? Inspiration is seeking you in order to transport your heart out of its slumber of forgetfulness into the beauty of your spirit's true song. And look at this. Inspiration is seeking you. Inspiration is seeking you, but it can't find you if you keep rolling around. <laughs> so when you slow down, you will be able, you will feel more connected. You will channel the muse. You will receive that inspiration, right? The inspiration can't find you if you don't stop for, for one second. So the slowdown is really going to serve you guys in a huge, huge way. And I promise you it is not a trap, okay? So just slow down and sing your song. Maybe slowing down will allow you to find the song that is yours to sing. So I love you guys. Sending you so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.